Thank you for tuning in to the Hope, Strength, Courage podcast. Love and support for parents whose kids are fighting for their lives. A weekly podcast created to support parents and caregivers of children diagnosed with cancer, where you will find resources collected to help you face each day with hope, strength, and courage. From interviews with the top experts in their fields, doctors, psychologists, chaplains, and inspiring frontline workers in pediatric oncology as they share their best advice, as well as day-to-day advice collected from other cancer moms and leaders in personal growth and development. From individuals who understand how hard it can be, I hope you will feel better prepared to cope with the day-to-day challenges of caring for your child. Hi, I am Laura Lane, and I am your host. My own daughter, Celeste, was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 12. In 2015, I wrote about our experiences in the book, Two Mothers, One Prayer, Facing Your Child's Cancer with Hope, Strength, and Courage. Since that time, I have dedicated thousands of hours to share with other parents and caregivers the resources, tools, tips, and skills and strategies I learned that helped our family stay happier, healthier, and more hopeful. My goal is to share with you my interviews with experts to support you as you care for a child with cancer. Today's episode features part two of my interview with Dr. Mark Seaton, PhD in philosophy, co-founder and CEO, Pursuit of Happiness, a nonprofit organization dedicated to data-driven research into the study of happiness and depression prevention. Last week, we spoke with Mark about the importance of cultivating strong relationships and being caring towards others through acts of kindness and how caring for others can make a difference in our own happiness. This week, we continue to discuss the next five of seven habits of happy people and how to choose happiness habits to increase your daily well-being. I hope you will enjoy the interview as much as I did. I am pleased to formally introduce you to Dr. Mark Seaton. Mark has his PhD in philosophy and has studied and published works on East Asian philosophy for the past 30 years. He earned his BA and MA at Seung Kwan Kwan University, the only Confucian university in Asia. He has taught at the State University of New York at Stony Brook, the University of California at Berkeley, and Oxford University, where he earned his doctorate. Mark and his team design and teach educational programs on the science and implementation of well-being for secondary schools, universities, and corporations such as Google, MediaMax, the China Accelerator, Dartmouth College, etc. He is especially interested in recent scientific discoveries on well-being, as well as the remarkable resonance between modern science and ancient wisdom. He is the co-founder of PursuitOfHappiness.org. So as you were saying, relationship pairing and then um, down the the list here. Yes, well, the next uh, correlate, which is very important, and uh, I would say um, especially, um, this is especially uh, one of the most promising fields. Um, there's all kinds of new discoveries coming out, not just regarding exercise, but the impact of uh, the body on the mind. And of course, we always knew that, right? We always, uh, we've known that our mothers have been telling us this for hundreds of years, but now we have very clear scientific proof that not only exercise, but also uh, exposure to sunlight, um, food, uh, all these things that are good for our body uh, have a very significant impact on our mind. Mm-hmm. And there seems to be pretty convincing evidence now that um, uh, doing aerobic exercise at least three times a day is probably as effective, if not more effective, than antidepressants. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I hesitate, you know, I would hesitate to say one is better than the other. It's probably, you know, in some cases you might have to do both. Right. Yeah, but you can get as many of those as you can, then the better, right? Right. And then uh, sunlight now is also playing a major, uh, has been discovered to play a major role, especially, you, know, you can take as many, as many vitamin D pills as you like, and we're discovering that vitamin D is, also has an impact on our sense of well-being. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you can take as many vitamin pills as you like, but the problem is our body doesn't absorb vitamin D easily. It's the sunlight that enables us to, you know, absorb it. Um, and also another thing, an interesting thing about sunlight is um, that uh, some people who are deprived of sunlight uh, get what we call SAD, yeah. uh, you know, SAD, yeah. uh, which is uh, seasonal affective disorder. And it's one of the most funniest abbreviations. I was not funny. It's it's actually uh, quite dramatic, but. Uh, it's very easy to remember. Seasonal affective disorder can be abbreviated uh, as uh, the word SAD. And uh, we used to think that you know only a very small portion of the population became depressed in winter. Uh, but now it seems that at least 30% of the population are uh, you know significantly affected by the weather. And we've also discovered that being exposed to sunlight in the morning or just daylight, going out, getting you know out of our chair, uh, getting off the computer and just walking in the garden or walking on the street, uh, especially early in the morning after waking up, can have a significant impact on the whole of our day. Oh, terrific. That's... There's food as well, but if I talked about food, I would go on forever. Right. So what can you tell us about flow? And um, So yeah. flow is all about um, finding an activity that is creative, um, that you're skilled at, um, that you love being involved with, um, and is challenging. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, I mean, just to choose an example, do you, do you have a flow activity? So, for myself, that would be painting. Oh, well, that's a great example. Um, so, um, they've discovered uh, this uh, Hungarian-American psychologist, he's got a very long Polish name, his name is Csikszentmihalyi, Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. Uh, in the 1980s, he discovered uh, flow through experimenting, uh, through experimenting with his students. Mm -hmm. And he found out that the happiest students are the ones who had a flow activity. It could be painting, it could be music. But anyway, it had to be a, some sort of creative activity, some activity that sort of uh, enabled you to uh, polish your skills uh, to a higher and higher level, mm -hmm. um, and that um, if you did find an activity like that, it, it could really boost your well-being. And also, it, you know, it takes our mind. Yeah. If we have worries or problems, flow activities are great for taking our mind away from, from those concerns. So for, for me, I, I love to paint, and I, I do abstract acrylic painting, but I love to put music on while I'm painting. And so it feels like my hands are dancing on the canvas. That's just the texture of, of, of the different paints, and, and I actually use my hands. I don't use brushes. I use um, different uh, tools and implements to move move it around, and I throw the paint and and just get my hands in there, get all dirty, and 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 put some just incredible music on. And it's like I'm it's it's this partnership that I'm having with the paint and the and the canvas, and it's 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 an incredibly expressive, fun for me I, that really does flow, um, really does describe it. Yeah, my my flow is talking about. Happiness and teach about happiness. I just forget about the time. I mean, I don't know how long we've been speaking. <laughs> all of this is probably falling asleep by now. I know. So, well, all of this has been terrific. The next question, um, maybe we'll quickly cover those other two topics: uh, virtual yes. engagement and meaning. Um, so, a spiritual um, spiritual engagement means more than you know simply being involved in a particular religious activity. It, 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 it's spiritual is, uh, in a broad sense, can be interpreted as a, a feeling a connection between something bigger than ourselves. So uh, we found out that um, anyone who uh, regularly participates um, in um, a group activity that has a spiritual dimension, you know, and it could be a religious activity, it could be, you know, the society of tree huggers, mm -hmm. or, you know, it could be yoga. But um, there's, that we found out there's a very significant difference in the level of well-being between people who are involved in that kind of activity 
as opposed to people who are just involved in a, in a bowling association or, or, or a chess club or something like that. Well, that, that will do you a lot of good too. Mm -hmm. um, and meaning is very important, finding meaning. And it's when you lose, you lose meaning, that's when, uh, that's a, a sign of, of uh, depression is when we feel that our lives are meaningless. So, so finding meaning is extremely important. And uh, a great book that, of course, a lot of people know about and that you've just read, you told me a short while ago, was Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, you know, who talks about finding meaning the most meaningless kind of situation, which is uh, a Nazi uh, prison camp. Right, yeah. Um, so, uh, and uh, strengths is uh, the next, um, we say correlate of happiness, or next habit of happy people is also extremely important, the ability to find our strengths. And that might take a long time, you know. But, uh, we, many teenagers still haven't discovered what their strengths are, but when we discover our unique strengths, so for example, let's say you discover that um, um, you're patient. Let's say you discover that you, you're very patient, and let's discover, you know, that you discover that you're a caring person. Maybe being a teacher um, would be a great way to express those strengths. So, and we've discovered that the people who discover their strengths are, are happy, but they're even more happy if they use their strengths in a career or in you know a pastime like painting for example mm -hmm. and then the, the the an even greater boost is achieved when we use those strengths for a cause that is greater than ourselves right. so i imagine that you are using your strengths um for you know the hope and happiness summit you're you're connecting uh you know particular strengths that you have you know, you have people skills. I know that you have people skills, mm -hmm. and you're connecting that with a much greater purpose. And I'm sure that makes you tremendously happy. Oh, it does. To be able to give back to the community that supported myself and our family, and um, being able to use my ability to 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 reach out and connect with others, um, to bring to garner information. I love to research, and I love to read. I have a library like you. Um, have behind you. I've got um, a huge library of books. I love to be able to share. Um, yeah. So for me, have be able to use my strengths to to help other people is is a real blessing. And I think that enables us to digest suffering. You know, to to uh, it it enables us not not to put suffering under the carpet. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's, yeah. In, and and you especially, you're you're using. Uh, you know, just an unbelievable experience, and you're turning it into something productive. You, you're turning something meaningless, seemingly meaningless, into something extremely meaningful. And um, yeah, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. Um, the other day, I was crossing, uh, going through customs to to take books um, into the United States to mail them off, and. The customs officer asked what it was that I that I had, and I explained I'm an author and I have a book, and I told him about my book, and and then he asked about my daughter, and I said, well, she passed away in 2013, and and he said I was sorry. I'm like, but it, this now gives me an opportunity to talk about my daughter to my heart's delight. I can tell the world about her. I can brag about her um, through my book, um, which gives me. A great deal of happiness to be able to talk about her and to give meaning behind what has happened to her that if we can bless other other people's lives through her story then then that gives us a um, it gives meaning to what we went through right I, I mean I can I can't say that I've been through I can't imagine you know what it was like I know that you know the 15 years of depression I went through were meaningless to me I, I would ask the question why why am I going through this you know what you know what's what's the meaning of all this? Uh, and then you know when I discovered that oh yes I should have you know if I'd done this I would have been happier if I wasn't doing this you know and and so basically I guess my motive is uh, I, I don't want anyone to go through the same suffering I did mm -hmm. and um, and that gives you know, meaning now to what you went through you can see a purpose behind it that. All of that experience allows you to relate to an incredible amount of people who need your insight. 
Yes, and I, I learn in the process and in this conversation yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so uh, finally, I, I this I should proceed to you know the final uh, habit of happy people, which is a big one, which is about positive emotions uh, and also mindfulness. Um, talking about positive emotions, um, you know, it's a it's a tricky thing because um, you know happiness is kind of like a salad. Uh, depending on your personality, depending on the situation you're in, you know, one of these habits that I've been talking about can be more effective than others. Mm -hmm. So for some people, uh, you know, being able to switch from uh, negative feelings to positive feelings is an easy task. For some people, it's very difficult, especially if you've been through a life-changing tragedy, you know, and someone tells you, don't be sad, be happy, you feel like slapping them in the face, mm -hmm. right? So, so it depends on your situation. Um, uh, you know, the using these positive emotions. So, for example, there are three major um, sort of sets of positive emotion. One is towards the past. One is about the present, and one is about the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, the most effective emotions, according to the research, are, are feeling gratitude about the past, things that we are grateful for on on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, then feeling, appreciating what is happening in the present. Being involved in the present is very important too. And then feeling hope for the future. Finding something about the future, you know, that we can feel hopeful. Yeah. So, you know, my mother has, uh, you know, Alzheimer's. So what I think about is, um, oh, you know, science is rapidly developing. Maybe, you know, we'll, we'll discover something that can bring more comfort to Alzheimer's patients. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, trying to turn negative thoughts into positive thoughts is very important. Um, I would say that um, for people going through a traumatic experience, uh, mindfulness is uh, can be very effective. Uh, mindfulness is, uh, it, it began with Buddhism, but now mindfulness is way bigger than Buddhism. It, it actually didn't be, it began with Hinduism. Mm -hmm. I think, and the Buddhists learn from the Hindus, but it's the whole idea about uh, being able to uh, focus on the present moment. And uh, breathing is very important, the yeah, control of breathing. Mm -hmm. um, and if we teach ourselves um, to uh, control our breathing and um, bring peace to our mind uh, through cultivating this meditative state, uh, it can actually have a knock-on effect on, on the whole of our day. So even five or ten minutes of, let's say, the, the what modern psychologists call call it is mindfulness-based stress reduction. Okay, yeah. Uh, mindfulness-based stress reduction. It doesn't have, have to be linked to a particular, you know, religion. And uh, you can practice it while you're walking. I mean, I'm actually, I have ADD. I, I can't sit down, you mm -hmm. know, and meditate. So I, I actually, you know, uh, walk by the beach or... Uh, I, comm I commute by boat, believe it or not. So I, I basically pace at the back of the boat, backwards and forwards, looking at the ocean. And of course, the crew think I'm crazy, but I don't care. <laughs> well, I've seen some hospitals that are now building um, uh, labyrinths, walking meditation labyrinths, for the patients to be able to to walk through um, if they're able to go outside, or obviously um, the staff, or for anyone on the grounds. Um, that are extremely helpful. I didn't know about that. Yeah, um, I've seen it at least one hospital um, um, that's local to me, and I'm hoping that they will begin to build more and more. If I had more room in my own garden, I would put one in. Um, they're they're beautiful. So. Oh, mine's a labyrinth anyway. It's so right. messy. <laughs> it's not quite messy, but there's a lot of different paths. So. Right. Oh, nice. Very nice. So which of these habits do you feel would be the most beneficial to children diagnosed with cancer and their parents to help them lead happier lives despite their diagnosis? Um, I would say some are more difficult to practice than others in that situation. Um, and, you know, I haven't been through that situation. So all I can, all, all I can do is to suggest um, ideas. Uh, I think Again, relationships are extremely important. The ability to encourage those children to be able to talk about how they feel mm -hmm. and give them the time to talk about as much as possible about how they feel. 
Um, some children are probably less prone to talking than others. Some of us can be introverts, uh, in which case um, fl flow activity. Mm -hmm. Or, for example, physical exercise, as much exercise as they can do in that particular yeah. situation. Um, take them out into the sun, you know. Um, I think those are very important things that we can do. G give them a flow activity. Probably, I would say, all, all, all these habits that we've spoken about are important, but depending on the personality, and I think that's where parents can use their intuition, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the personality of their child, you know, which habit would be more easy. Uh, easy to practice. And, and they're, they're great reminders for parents themselves who are spending weeks, months, sometimes even years on end at the hospital with their children to take those time out, go for a walk, um, get outside if you can, get someone to relieve you for a little bit. Um, I know for myself, um, sick, when my daughter was at Sick Kids Hospital, I stayed at Ronald McDonald House for three months. And um, on the nights that I was able to go back to to the house um, to rest, I would go to their craft room at 10, 11 o'clock at night. I had some canvases and some paints that I would take down with me, and I would paint in the middle of the night um, in order to, to relieve some of the stress and, and have a bit of that flow for myself. So finding creative options. Today it's so popular for the, uh, the coloring books. The adult coloring books, it's something that we can take in the hospital rooms with us. And um, there, there's so many more, I think, options than, than before. We just need to be creative and think of the fact that we have to take care of our own well-being if we want to be able to take care of our children. Um, yeah. There were no good to our children if we're sick as well, right? Well, exactly. And, and the only way you can really teach something is to practice it yourself. So I don't think... You know, it would be possible to teach a child about flow unless you've actually experienced a flow activity. Right. Yeah. So, and when, just to to sum up everything that we we've, we've gone over, is there anything from your website you would like to direct people to? Um, and is there a particular spot online? We'll obviously send them to the Pursuit of Happiness dot org. Um, um, right? Yeah. I well, you know, we're, we're talking about, I, I think we're talking about going through probably a pretty intense period <clears throat> of uh, suffering, of, of difficulty in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And, um, you, you know, the question of how do you turn that suffering um, into something, you know, meaningful? And how to take the edge of that suffering, you know? I mean, you know, I've been, I haven't been through that kind of suffering, but I've, I've, I've been through, um, you know, a, a, pretty, a pretty challenging period. And I would say that, um, yes, you, you, you can't promise someone that, you know, you're going to give them ultimate happiness in a situation like that. Um, but I certainly think that, um, you know, the science is telling us and also the philosophy is telling us that, that actually suffering leads to a deeper form of happiness. And I would point you to maybe two or three things on the website to read more about when you discuss to, to, um, that, that show us that happiness and suffering are actually friends, they're not enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, and I think the Dalai Lama once said, uh, you know, the, the, the more we go through suffering, the bigger our hearts become, the more compassionate. I know with my own daughter, I watched her just have a greater appreciation for life because of what she had been through. And then when she returned to school and people were making a fuss and uh, about small little things, she's like, Mommy, those things aren't important. That's, she what had they, such exactly. a larger perspective on life. She was much older than her years. Um, yeah. It was incredible to see that growth within her. Um, yeah. What what you thought was important becomes much less important. Yeah. Yeah. And what you didn't even think about takes on great importance. Yeah. Um, but I would say that um, if uh, probably if if you like videos, uh, the one of the most interesting um, videos on the website that's connected to the idea of transforming 
suffering into happiness or meeting a particular challenge and you know to, to turning lemons into lemonade um, is the story of Mali in uh, Tai Chao Wei. You can see this here. It's on the if you go to the uh, resources section on the, on the menu, the website menu. Okay. Um, so you can probably yeah. that on the help the screen. Okay. Uh, yeah, the resources, right? And there's a drop down, and you go to teaching resources. Actually, it's more than teaching resources. You can use it personally, um, and then you'll see on that page this uh, video, and it's a video of a of a Chinese couple, a, a Chinese dancing couple. And they won, uh, they won a prize. Uh, it, it's almost like uh, America's Got Talent for China. Okay. Um, and the extraordinary thing about them is the, the, um, uh, that the she has no arm. She's missing an arm and he's missing a leg. And especially, you know, in those days, this is a few years back in China, um, missing an arm, missing a leg could have a devastating impact on your life in many ways, not uh, not just in terms of what you can do, but how you're regarded, mm -hmm. how you're treated. And uh, you'll you'll see that they they turned it into something absolutely mind-boggling. Um, and but I don't understand why they won the second prize. They, <laughs> I think you know if I uh, I think they should have got the first prize. But um, that video is astonishing. If you're interested in reading more about Suffering and happiness. Um, if you go to the history of happiness section on the website, um, scroll up the screen a tiny bit, um, and you click the history of happiness. There's a, there's a, right, exactly. There's a drop-down menu with the names of all the great thinkers and psychologists who've uh, contributed to our understanding of happiness. I would the particular names you want to look for are Viktor Frankl and William James. Victor Frankl, we've just spoken about mm -hmm. uh, uh, his work, Man's Search for Meaning, is described there. Actually, um, the blog that is written around the dance video that we just saw is all about Victor Frankl. Oh, terrific! So, uh, yeah, and uh, so I recommend reading that it's on that blog. Um, the other thinker to uh, read about is William James, who was. Probably, it's probably the most famous psychologist in, the his, in American history. He is also a philosopher. So he's a man after my own heart. He combined philosophy and uh, psychology. Um, so look at him drop down. Oh, there he is, William James. And William James went through very serious uh, depression. Um, but And he talks about those experiences giving him a much sort of uh, deeper sense of a deeper insight into life, of giving him wisdom and uh, a purpose that he would he would not have possibly have thought about before. Um, so he's he's a very interesting man. Oh, terrific! I'll have to read that afterwards. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Um, this has been a fabulous almost an hour. I think we've been able to to um, speak together and. I have just, thank you again, thank you very much for all your sharing and hopefully these ideas will have an impact on other parents, ideas that they can use with their children to bring moments of happiness to each day and um, help them find meaning and flow in their lives and build their relationships. They're all terrific. Thank you very much. Well, you know, thank you very much for for uh, giving me, you know, it's a privilege for me. And uh, I would say that, you know, there's, uh, th there's something very hopeful going on. Mm -hmm. There's something really hopeful going on. And we're discovering more and more about, you know, how we can, uh, how we can even be a tiny bit happier than we are yeah. uh, today rather than yesterday. Wow. I, I hope you have a wonderfully happy day and week, and thank you again for all of the knowledge that you are sharing with the world and, and with our audience today. I hope you have a terrific day. Thanks, Laura. You too. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What fascinated me most about the final five habits Dr. Seaton shares in the conclusion of our interview is that he discussed relationships, caring, exercise, flow, spiritual engagement, and meaning strengths and virtues, and positive mindset. Most of these are available to all of us, and we can work on them every day.
We can find meaning in our struggles and turn around our thoughts by using the many tools and habits available to us. To learn more about Mark and the Pursuit of Happiness organization, please visit his website at pursuitofhappiness.org. And that's pursuit with a dash of dash happiness.org. Please join me next week for my interview with Fizz Anthony as we discuss the healing nature of music and how to bring more music into your child's life. Before we end our show today, we have one last segment. Over the last few years, I have asked other cancer moms what advice they had wished they'd known when their child was first diagnosed. I've compiled that information and will be sharing their advice each week. You can download the top 101 pieces of advice that I put together as a mini ebook at twomothersoneprayer.com. Today's advice comes from Deanne. Don't underestimate the impact of the diagnosis on your other children. Even if they seem or say they are fine, they, the whole family really, will need support throughout. And our second piece of advice was keep a journal and take more photos, even on bad days. This is my biggest regret. I concur, Deanne. Thanks for sharing that. If you have advice you've learned along the way that you wish someone had told you weeks, months, or years earlier, I invite you to fill out the contact form on our website, twomothersoneprayer.com, and I will be sharing your advice with our listeners on future shows. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule today to listen to the Hope, Strength, Courage podcast. I look forward to sharing more experts and advice with you again next Wednesday. Please remember to take a minute to dis- to subscribe to the show. Thanks also need to go out to our Hope, Strength, Courage production team, which consists of my wonderful assistant, Tracy Ogilvie McDonald, Andrew Braun at Braun Audio and Audio Geek, music by Chris Anthony, social media support by Marie K. Constantino, and graphic design by Amy Hosmer. To learn more about myself, or Lee, and to order my book, please visit lauralane.c. <laughs>